Hello students, welcome to your online week 10 lecture on Introduction to Management Accounting, Part 1. In Part 1 we are going to cover the following things. Firstly, the main differences between Management and Financial Accounting. Secondly, the definition of Management Accounting. Thirdly, the benefits and uses of Management Accounting. Fourthly, management accounting systems. Fifthly, cost accounting. And last, cost classifications, starting with cost behavior. As you can see on the screen in front of you, uh, there are a number of major differences between financial accounting and cost accounting. The first of these is the users of information. Management accounting provides information primarily to internal users, managers and employees, while financial accounting provides information primarily to external users such as shareholders, investments, customers, suppliers, etc. Second main difference between the two is regulations and rules. Management accounting, basically there are no rules in management accounting. Information is tailored to meet the needs of the internal users, while Information for financial accounting has lots of rules and regulations, including the Accounting Standards and the Corporations Act. The third main difference is the type of data used by management accounting being financial and non-financial. Financial being monetary amounts and non-financial being non-monetary amounts. Now, financial accounting is primarily providing financial information, that is, monetary amounts. The last main difference between the two is the nature of the information. Whereas management accounting is involved in providing information from the past, current and future information, such as budgets, financial accounting is primarily involved in providing past information, information from previous years. So what is the definition of management accounting? Well as you should already know accounting is all about providing information to users to make economic decisions about the business. Management accounting does a similar thing but it provides that information primarily to internal users and for the purposes of helping management plan, control the business and of course measure the performance of the business and the individual inside users. An example of this as you can see on the screen is preparing a budget. This is part of planning. Then comparing that budget to actual performance which is part of control. And this helps us to determine the cost of products and services. The benefit of using management accounting, so the benefits and uses of management accounting, on the next page are many. However, the main ones are of course providing information for the decision making and planning by management assisting those managers in directing and controlling the activities of the business, motivating the managers and employees towards the goals of the business, and then measuring the performance of the managers and the employees, as well as the company, and finally evaluating the position of the business compared to its competitors. Now in this process, cost accounting is a very important part of management accounting. And in order to provide the information required by the users, management accounting needs to develop and run various information systems. 
the information required just doesn't appear on someone's desk. We need a formal systematic way of identifying information, measuring, capturing, recording and of course presenting that information to the users. Now the systems required to do this for management accounting are many and varied, but as you can see from the notes in front of you, four of the main management accounting systems used by companies, businesses, are cost accounting systems, budgeting systems, performance management systems, and cost management systems. And you can see from those four important systems, two of them relate to costs, cost accounting, which is the identification, measuring, recording and reporting of costs, costs to produce goods and services, and then cost management system, which is a system designed to allow management to better control and hopefully reduce costs. So why would business need so much information about costs? Well, ask yourself this question. When you go and buy a product, what's the first thing you normally want to know? Yes, most of us, it's price. And how does the company determine price? Well, if it simply chooses a price without knowing the cost of producing the goods and services, then that price may well be too low and even involve a loss. So first, we need to determine all the costs involved in producing the goods and services so we can then determine a price to charge for the product or service. Once we've done that, of course, then the business can evaluate the profitability of that product or service. And of course, this information, <coughs> pardon me, this information, including the costs, is necessary to prepare the reports, the financial reports provided. So what is a cost? Well, a cost is a resource used or given up to achieve a particular objective. And a resource is anything that a business needs to use in its operations, to make goods and services, and sell those goods and services at a profit. So a cost is really the price of the resources used. The example, of course, is any cost used to make a product or service. So if we have these costs relating to different product services, call them objects, how do we define a cost object? A cost object is anything for which a separate measurement of cost is required. For example, a car. We need to record, allocate and measure costs in producing a car. So therefore the car is a cost object. Now, a cost object doesn't have to be a product or service. It usually is, but a cost object, as the definition states, is anything for which a separate measurement of cost is required. So that could also include a individual department or division within a company uh, whereby management needs to measure the performance and the cost of running a department or division. Management needs to classify the costs that they have in producing goods and services for many different reasons and decisions. So we have to be aware of what main purposes do management need to use cost information. This is called classifying costs and the first classification that we're going to look at is based on the behaviour of those costs. That is, how do the costs behave as we're making goods and services? Now, to help understand the behaviour, 
we have to understand what drives these costs, what makes them happen, what makes them increase or decrease. To fully understand this, we need to understand the concept of a cost driver. A cost driver is anything that causes costs to be incurred. Yeah, it's a bit like a, a motor car driver, a car driver. A car driver is a person, always. And a cost driver can also be a person. For example, the number of hours that an employee works making products, the more hours they work, the more products they'll make, therefore the more costs that will be incurred. Now, cost drivers are also, as per that example of an assembly worker, they're usually related to levels of activity. So, hours worked, motor vehicles, kilometres driven, or, for example, the number of products made in a particular day. We're talking about behaviour, there are two main types of behaviour that costs exhibit, and we classify this behaviour between what's called variable cost, that's where the total cost will change as the level of activity changes, but the variable cost per unit, per item or product produced, does not change. Example, materials used to make the product, such as metal or glass used to make a motor vehicle. As you can see, there's an example there in your notes talking about wooden tables. Uh, the cost of timber per table is $100. If the factory makes a hundred tables, then it's going to cost them a total of ten thousand dollars. If the activity increases and the factory makes one thousand tables, well then one thousand times a hundred dollars per table is going to result in a hundred thousand dollars of variable costs, total variable costs. But each time we're making the tables, the cost per table, per unit, remains constant at one hundred dollars. So showing this graphically, we can see that our cost line increases, the total variable cost line increases from zero when no products are being made up to a total increased cost for the number of products produced. Now you can see that this line is linear, it does not curve, and the reason for that is because the variable cost is constant. The other classification of cost based on behaviour is fixed, which is quite the opposite. Fixed cost is where the total cost does not change as the level of activity, example production, changes. But the rate of fixed cost per unit does change. Again, an example there is where the factory is making wooden tables and we're talking about the depreciation on the machines in the factory to make that, those tables. When that depreciation is $20,000 per year, regardless of the number of tables made, whether it's one or a hundred, the total depreciation cost is still $20,000 for the year. However, the fixed cost per table actually will decrease the more tables we make. You can see if we make 100 tables, the cost is $200 per table. If we make 1,000 tables, the cost per table, fixed cost, is only $20 per table. When we look at the graph of fixed costs, you can see that it represents a straight line, not an increasing line like variable costs. That's because the total amount of cost is fixed, doesn't change. The interesting thing is you can see at the level of production of zero, not making nothing, we still have our fixed cost that is incurred and needs to be paid. This is a very important concept for management as even if we're not making any sales and no income, we still have a fixed cost that we have to pay for. To finish off everyone, you have two exercises to do on part one of the lecture before you go into the next two parts of your lecture. So please enjoy the rest of your lecture and your break. Bye for now.